Thank you so much, Dr. Morris. A lot to think about. And remember, you have those cards that you can write down your questions on, and we'll pass them into the aisle and have those questions addressed at the end of our program this evening. And now on to our next speaker, who is Dr. Heather Johnson. And she is a cardiologist at the UW School of Medicine and Public Health. Dr. Johnson works with patients to help them manage their high blood pressure and other heart disease risk factors. She has studied how quitting smoking reduces people's risks for heart disease and developed the My Heart program, which coaches young adults with high blood pressure on living more heart healthy lives, something that is good for all of us. So please join me in welcoming Dr. Heather Johnson. Good evening. Thank you to the committee for the opportunity to be able to speak tonight. I really appreciate it. And I really appreciated Dr. Morris's talk, and I'll actually be referring to it a little bit as I chat also. So when I was invited to talk tonight, I received an email saying, we really need to be able to discuss why it's important to have a healthy heart healthy blood vessels, and thus the title is Keys to a Healthy Heart and a Healthy Mind. I do not have any disclosures. So over the next 20 minutes, I'm going to give an overview of heart or cardiovascular disease, and I'll discuss what that means. But in general, we're going to take a look as far as blood vessels, how heart attacks or strokes may also affect our brain health really build on this relationship between having a healthy heart, healthy arteries, and what that means for our risk for dementia. And then I'll provide some tips along the way. Many of them you may have heard already, but the question is why? Why are certain recommendations important? So let's start with a concept here as far as what is plaque. Many of you have, may have talked with your doctors and your doctor or nurse or physician assistant or healthcare team may say, we need to lower your risk as far as developing plaque, or you may have plaque, or you may have also atherosclerosis, you may have heard the term. But what does that really mean? So if we take a look as far as the vessels here and the pointer there is, so I'm gonna use the light. There we go. So on both sides here, sort of a long look at the artery here, open, nice and clean. Nothing's there. The little short version here is if we just look straight down the tube. In general, in general, we're born with very healthy arteries. Before we're even teenagers, we begin to build this early as far as this yellow we see. Very thin. Not this thick, but very, very thin. Plaque. Before teenagers. We just heard that our risk for Alzheimer's and dementia in general begins years in advance. And part of it has to do with our arteries' health, our blood vessels. So when we talk about our risk as far as artery health, we're talking about how much of this plaque built up, how we don't have as much room anymore for the blood to get to our organs, to get to our brain, to be able to provide healthy blood flow to our kidneys and down to our legs. So when we talk about plaque or atherosclerosis, that all plays a role. So what is cardiovascular disease? Cardio is heart. Vascular has to do with our vessels, but particularly the arteries. So it's our heart trying to be able to pump and help protect our vessels and help work with our vessels. When they're diseased, there's that extra plaque buildup. So it's the narrowing of our arteries. The blood can't get through very well at all. Some of you, either personally or have significant others, who've had a heart attack. That's cardiovascular disease. The vessels, unfortunately, had significant plaque buildup. Maybe not a heart attack, but maybe heart stents, where something had to be placed in an artery to open it up to allow the blood to flow a bit better. Maybe open heart surgery, also known as coronary artery bypass surgery, or cabbage. All similar terms as far as that open heart surgery. That's where they had to implant other vessels to go around those blockages for the heart. 
certain types of stroke fall under cardiovascular disease. The blood still, the heart still pumps blood directly into the brain. So stroke is part of, you know, certain types of stroke as far as having unhealthy vessels. Peripheral artery disease also falls under this category. So some people may say, well, my heart is fine, but I don't have good blood flow down in my legs. Or maybe I have a little blockage in my neck, or a lot of blockage. But that falls under peripheral artery disease, arteries all over the body that become diseased over time. Let's take a little bit closer look at when we talk about a heart attack. So as Carol mentioned, I'm a cardiologist or a heart doctor. And it's a pleasure to be able to work with the Alzheimer's Disease Research Center because of the fact that the health of the heart and the health of the brain are so important together. So when patients come to see me, it's either to prevent a heart attack or maybe they've had a heart attack. How do we prevent another? It's not too late. Even people who've had a heart attack are at risk of another one, so we still have to work together of what should we do. But what does that heart attack mean as far as blood vessels? Well, this is the heart muscle, and these tiny little vessels here, very tiny ones, they're not very big. Those are the ones that are laying over the heart, the heart, the actual heart muscle that's beating right now. So if you see this little dark area, that's the area of the heart attack. That part of the muscle where the heart should be beating is not getting good blood flow. But see how tiny those arteries are. They're the ones doing the work around the clock to feed our muscles, but they're also the heart muscle, but they're also helping to feed the brain too. So when we talk about a heart attack and we look closer at those blood vessels, that yellow looks familiar. That's that plaque. Not only is it in our big arteries, but it's also in those arteries that are feeding that heart muscle. And so that's why it's important as far as how all of our arteries are together. And if there's one set of arteries that may have plaque or have injury or things like that, it lets us know that other arteries may not be very healthy. Unfortunately, heart attacks cause one in four deaths in the United States, 25%. Heart-related death is still the number one cause of death for men and women. So, I couldn't be a heart doctor and not give some warning signs here. So I had to just give a few, not to startle anyone, but if we're gonna talk about our vessel health, when might we need to get checked out? Chest discomfort, chest pressure, pain or numbness in our arms, nausea, vomiting, particularly in women. It's still most common for people to have chest discomfort. Maybe not pain, but pressure. But women can have other signs or symptoms, nausea, fatigue, indigestion, shortness of breath, even some back pain, diffuse sweating. If it suddenly comes on, yes, seek emergent care and call 911. Let's move up to the brain as far as stroke. So this is a slice of the brain. Again, notice the smaller vessels. Precious little vessels, they're not super big, but they're responsible for feeding our brains. They're responsible for keeping the brain healthy as we work as far as to prevent and delay onsets of dementia. The vessels beginning to look familiar to us now, the blood vessels. Certain types of stroke is when there's a sudden clot that just blocks the flow in a vessel. But the key thing about that is that here's that yellow stuff again, that plaque. That's what contributes to all of a sudden that blood, that flow, suddenly stopping when it comes to strokes. So it's never too late for us to address plaque or our artery health. Unfortunately, stroke is responsible for one out of every 19 deaths in the United States. So dementia is definitely a major, major issue, but all these different factors lead up to it. And as I mentioned, even if you've had one, it, we still work together to prevent another. Signs of a stroke. Sudden numbness, weakness, face, arm, leg, one side, sometimes even both sides, confusion, trouble seeing, sudden dizziness, walking, severe headaches. Taking time to rapidly address things preserves our brain, preserves our heart, so seek care if necessary. You've seen this picture as far as healthy brain versus an Alzheimer's disease brain here. But the issue is that the arteries feed both the heart and the brain. 
So unfortunately, when our heart and when our other arteries are damaged, we have lower blood flow to the brain. It contributes to memory loss. You heard about the cognition tests. It doesn't allow us to do so well on those types of tests because we're not getting good blood flow when our arteries are not healthy. So we have to protect the brain. You may notice some of these things, diabetes, high blood pressure, smoking, et cetera. The same way they affect the heart and our arteries, they also affect the brain. So I feel like I've been Debbie Downer, and I didn't mean to do that at all. So I say the good news is that you can slow the progression of plaque, and not only that, you can lower your risk of having either your first heart attack, first stroke, or another heart attack or stroke. That's important. So let's talk about some things that we know to do, or maybe not yet know to do. And this is when the grumbling started. Quit smoking. It's never too late. To take it away from dementia for a second, if you had to have surgery in two weeks, your surgeon and your anesthesiologist would tell you the best thing you can do to improve your outcomes for surgery is to quit smoking. That's how quickly quitting smoking affects your body. That's how quickly it begins to help your arteries begin to provide more blood flow to your organs. One in five deaths still caused by smoking. Smoking increases your risk of heart attacks, stroke, dementia. Inhaling other people's smoke can also have an effect. So you'll have to either kick them out somewhere or sort of separate yourself a bit. But protecting yourself is extremely important. Wisconsin's known for its tobacco quit line. The number's up here. Your providers all have it. There's also on various websites here. There are many, many ways to help you, no matter how many years you've been smoking, as far as to help you quit. Handle the stress related with it, and also to be able to help limit the weight gain that many people are concerned about with quitting smoking. It's never too late for that. Know your cholesterol numbers. So here's a real artery here. That yellow looks familiar. Yellow is not going to be anyone's favorite color after my talk, but nevertheless, it's, it's, it's very, very, it's one of those things in which, oh, I have to get my cholesterol checked, but why? Why is it important? Well, the good cholesterol, our HDL, when those levels are lower over time, it actually helps this plaque to build up a bit more. Things that can contribute to really lowering that HDL is tobacco use and sedentary lifestyle. So what are some things? Quitting smoking, being active, and we'll hear after from Dr. Barnes about exercise and being active. High levels of bad cholesterol can actually raise, can actually damage the arteries and cause this yellow plaque. So that's the LDL, that's that bad cholesterol. Where do we get it? Our red meat, fried foods, Dr. Morris said fish is good. She didn't say fried fish was good, though. <laughs> and I didn't put this on here because I realize I'm in Wisconsin, but cheese is our saturated fat. And I actually took out my pen and I wrote it down because Dr. Morris said, so I can blame her now, less than one ounce of cheese per week for the MIND diet. It's not a ton of cheese every day. How many people wrote down less than one pat of butter? Yes, notice that, that because butter, cheese, all causes those, that LDL, that bad cholesterol to be higher. I know it's football season. High triglycerides, oh, that's the good stuff, are muffins, and it's okay that you had a muffin tonight. <laughs> Honestly, I would have joined you if I got off from work a little bit earlier, but I, I couldn't, it's okay. Breads, pastas, potatoes, no, those things were not highlighted in green in Dr. Morris's talk. But there's a reason for that, because all of these things cause and the, the yellow, and the issue is that that yellow is what breaks off. That's what causes the heart attack. That's what causes the stroke. Well, what difference does it make? My cholesterol's always been high. Every time we challenge our body with an unhealthy meal, we're challenging those blood vessels. And we're also irritating this plaque a bit. And so that's where sometimes if people hear, oh, the plaque can rupture, it can break off because it's irritated. So I'm not saying you can't enjoy life, but every meal can't 
necessarily always be an unhealthy meal if that's your goal as far as protecting your blood vessels. So for what I tell, when I talk with patients and out in the community, I say you still get to enjoy life, but everything in moderation. What is your blood pressure? How many people know it? So we all have see these monitors come up either in clinic or we may have some at our home. That top number is called systolic. That's how much pressure your heart is working against when it's squeezing. In general, in general, you and your doctor may decide something different. Anything higher than 140 may be an issue. It may demonstrate that your vessels are seeing too much pressure when that heart is squeezing. That bottom number, it's called the diastolic blood pressure greater than 90. So people say top number, our goal is sometimes people say less than 150, but either way, whatever you and your doctor set up as far as your goals, keep those numbers down below that. Many times people may not feel high blood pressure, but why is it important? Looking at that brain area, that risk of stroke, vision lost, people are concerned about heart failure, the fluid building up in the heart and in the lungs, heart attacks, kidney disease, dialysis, kidney failure, sexual dysfunction. But what's important about this figure is that these are all important areas as far as our arteries, where the arteries send blood so our organs can flow. So we don't want the high blood pressure. We don't want the high cholesterol. I'm going to get in trouble for this one too over football season, but limit alcohol. And it was also mentioned for the MIND diet too. So originally I was gonna blame the American Heart Association, but I can also say Dr. Morris. But in general, the American Heart Association says for women limit to one, men limit to two, and actually it might even be better for the MIND, for the mind diet to even limit further to just one. Some people may limit their sodium, and I say some because this is between you and your healthcare team. Your doctor may say, you know, limit around two grams. Portion control, bigger is not always better. So we may want the best value for our money, but maybe we can save a little bit. Even if you don't want to share it, you can still save a little bit for later. Things I don't have time to address, diabetes, high blood sugar. High blood sugar floating around the arteries plays a role as far as irritating those arteries, irritating those blood vessels. Needing to lose weight. The body has to process as far as within our fat cells, and so it irritates those blood vessels. It takes time. In our clinic, we say one pound a week. It's not a rush. We're not looking for the nearest fat diet. Stress can play a role, too. Start moving, stay active. I say start moving for those of us in which we may enjoy the couch or chair a little bit more than a walk. But even if we don't need to lose weight, even if we may consider ourselves very fit and healthy, it is important to exercise. And saying, I run around quickly doing my errands does not count as exercise. <laughs> if you say you walk your dog and your dog has to stop every 30 seconds, that doesn't count. The interesting thing is though, the American Heart Association says 30 minutes of moderate activity. What gets your heart rate up and keeps it up at least five days a week. Now. Many times we either may not be able to, either physically or have the time to put in 30 minutes five days a week. What about 10 minutes? What about five minutes? What about right there in your house, in your home? Please don't go out and start a new program without talking with your healthcare team, but start moving and stay moving because every time we keep moving, those blood vessels release very healthy chemicals and they help to stabilize the plaque relax the blood vessels, and our brain loves it. Things we can't change, we can't change that we gain more birthdays and we get older. Race and ethnicities, minorities, particularly African Americans, have higher rates of stroke, heart attack, and artery disease. Our family history, we can't change genetics. But by working with your healthcare team, knowing your blood pressure, cholesterol, blood sugar, that's important. You may need medication. Your doctors may say, listen, for your heart, for your brain, for your kidneys, whatever it is, you may need certain prescription medications. That's between you and your team. I leave it up to our Alzheimer's research specialists here as far as what's best as far as the brain health. But for certain issues to protect your heart, you may indeed need some medication. And please, if they start it with you, don't just stop it suddenly. Your arteries won't like it. 
So in summary, yes, healthy arteries are critical for a very healthy brain. We can slow the progression of blockages in the heart and in the arteries, and we can lower your risk for either your first or another heart attack or stroke and listen to your body. The list is here as far as the six key things that I talked about. Stop smoking, know the numbers, stay active. I know winter's coming soon. We don't want to think about it. But already think ahead. I say, you know, where, where will you be working out, exercising, doing your activity when the snow falls? We don't want anybody on the ice. Work with your team, and you may need prescription medication. Lastly, I want to say congratulations. By being here, you're absorbing information. I see a lot of people taking notes. Please share it with your significant others and friends, but you're taking steps towards a healthy heart and brain. Thank you very much.